I really don't. And I, 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 whether they do or not, I'm sure that they do. I don't want to insert anything or come to any wrong conclusions. But the way when you say then, that's right. You read those particular passages and you think, what is he thinking and why would he say then? Anyway, real quickly, finish up this uh, chapter and we'll be done for the day. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Okay, so he's going to give him a tenth. And once again, is that descriptive or prescriptive? Descriptive. That's all. It just describes, this is what I'm going to do. If I say, Charlie Garrett, I, from now on out, I'm going to give 20% of what I'm going to give to the church, then I'd better give 20%. The Bible says, perform your vows, right? If I say I'm going to give 5% because I've lost my house, I've lost my job, and that's all I can give, I need to feed my children. Do you think the Lord is going to be any, any more displeased with that or any more pleased with it or whatever than his 10%? No. This is describing something. God did not put an unnecessary yoke on them when he did the tithing regulations. He did the tithing regulations 10% every third year. Okay? So for people to take this and say, well, yeah, that may be true, but... God prescribed 10% at the time of Abraham and Melchizedek, and he prescribed 10% at the time of Jacob, and that's not true. It just simply describes that they made a vow to do something. It doesn't prescribe anything to us. Before we go, I, I, I want to stop early just because, you know, we're at the end of a chapter, and I don't remember what chapter we just ended, so somebody's got to remind me next week. 29. But, 29, okay. Um, I thought seeing as how we got just a couple minutes, we might as well... Poor Pat's going to have to fall asleep on this one because she heard it last night, but no, I'm kidding. Um, we'll read the 51st Psalm just because it's so beautiful. It says, To the chief musician, a Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone in to Bathsheba and after he had killed Uriah, which is not mentioned, but anyway, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Now, Paul brings that up in the New Testament in the book of Romans. Uh, let me see. I think it's uh, uh, Romans. Give me just one second. I don't want to divert too much, but Paul makes a point about that. Let's see here. Justification. Our justification. Um, certainly not. He says, well, I'll start with uh, chapter 3, verse 1, but it's actually 4. What advantage has a Jew or what is the prophet of circumcision, much in every way, chiefly because to them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? What if their unbelief made the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. He's quoting this particular psalm. And he's saying that despite anything else, God is the one that... that uh, does the justifying um, against you? Okay, uh, blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin. My mother conceived me. All right. Or some say I was sinful from birth. Surely I was sinful from birth, sinful from my mother's womb. Behold, your desire, you desire truth in the inward parts and the hidden part. You will make known to make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Does anybody know what that symbolizes? Purge me with hyssop. Well, the, the, the blood um, Passover. Okay, the Passover and also the... The branch with the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb. They took hyssop and they put the blood on the lintel and on the doorpost. It's also used in the tabernacle when Moses blessed the people. He took hyssop, dipped it in yarn. It's also used when cleansing people from leprosy or mildew in their house, a blight. They would take the hyssop dunk it into the blood, which was mixed with other things. And where else is hyssop mentioned in the Bible? Um, At Jesus' crucifixion, when they took a branch of hyssop and put the wine up to him. It's all pointing to Jesus, every single thing. And he is saying, purge me with hyssop. He understood the temple rituals. Take this rich up, hyssop, which is like a mint. It's a mint plant. It has a per, you know uh, aromatic and you can chew on it. Anyway, purge me with that. It's saying... Take away my sin. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. That's what Jesus' blood does. It washes us and makes us whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out 
all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. doesn't say, don't take away my salvation. He says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, which he had committed, O God, the God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. He's saying that you can go to the temple with all the sacrifices in the world, and if you don't have a broken and contrite spirit, God doesn't hear. Now, right? Jesus even quotes that, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, which is from another, another uh, area in the Bible, but it's also pointing to this. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be placed praised with the sacrifices of righteousness. With burn offering and whole burn offering, they shall offer bulls on your altar. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Psalms, which are so uplifting and so uh, emblematic of our condition in this world. And thank you for the faithfulness of David who wrote those Psalms and the greatness that we can read in them about you and your majesty. Thank you for the week ahead. Please uh, lead each person here safely home today and throughout the week and uh, bring us here on Sunday to help us to uh, remember to raise our hands and worship to you who created us and who loves us so much that you sent Jesus for us. And we love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ah, all righty. No, oh yeah, time for a goodie. No doubt about that. Let me, uh, let me see. Oh man, do these look good. I got the big one too. Let me take a bite of this in front of Rory. Mm. That's delicious, boys. See you there.